So now in this video, we're going to look at an NPN bipolar junction transistor version of the AND logic gate. So we're going to have an output, we're going to have an LED that can only be turned on if both of these transistors are turned on. So now I have a 10 kilo ohm resistor here. I think I actually should have a 1 kilo ohm resistor. We'll look at that uh, coming up. But uh, any case, main thing is we'll have the output and this signal is too weak to power the load. So is that one, especially when it goes through the uh, diode drop and that transistor has to be on. So we're actually going to lose some uh, voltage to the output. But for the most part, it will be off unless we press that switch and that switch that will turn both transistors on and be able to uh, power the load. Otherwise, it's uh, going to be off. So pretty straightforward there. We're going to use the 2N2222 transistor. Normally I've been using the 2N3904, but I'm not sure where I put the ones that I normally use, So, uh, especially for this video series. So I'm going to use the 2N2222s that I normally use instead of uh, pulling out some new resistors. They have the same pin layout, and as far as this uh, circuit is concerned, they, they basically work about equally well. We're nowhere near the maximum current that they can output. So we have the uh, switches are ready on the board. And so you can see that they go directly to the positive supply on one side of the switch. So we got the top up there to that uh, supply and then the bottom of this switch there to the positive supply. So this connects to that side. So that's all one connection right now. And then up here, those two pins connect directly together. So that's all one connection right there. But uh, we're gonna stay on this side of it anyways for everything we're going to do. So now we're going to grab the uh, 2N2222 right here and looking at the flat side if it starts with 2N if 2 and N are the first and second number and letter there's nothing else before it. The uh, left pin's emitter, middle pin base, right pin collector that's what I've noticed so far with every bipolar junction transistor that starts with 2N. There's other transistor types that start with 2N that's a different story. So in any case we got the uh, collector to the uh, yellow jumper here, and I'm going to move it all the way to the right, right there. But it's the collector that's to the positive supply. As you can see there, we're going to grab the other transistor. As you can see with the other transistor, the collector is to the emitter of the, the top transistor there. And then uh, base below that, emitter below that, which is the pin layout of this transistor right now when it is turned this way. So I'm going to put the collector to the emitter right there and we're going to push them over here because now we're going to do our well first let's do the resistor here and uh, I can't think of what this resistor would be called but I really think I should be using a 1 kilo ohm transistor but we got 10 we'll look at that uh, a little more coming up that goes from emitter to ground and a resistor here helps hold uh, that's 220 ohm helps hold the uh, voltage at that point even with uh, different loads and so it's at the emitter it's at the uh, bottom pin we can zoom in and get a little bit better look right there so bottom pin now we're going to grab a couple 10 kilo ohm resistors and go from the switch to the base of the transistor so i'm not going to look through the camera because i keep missing this when i do and uh, so one side of the switch the other side of the base it doesn't really like those two spots. Let's move it down. I don't like those two slots for some reason. And uh, that happens from time to time. Plus, these pins are a little thin, and so it's easy for them to get kind of misdirected. So there we go. This was a cheaper resistor kit, but it had a lot of value. So, yep, we're to that switch and to the uh, base there. And then I uh, will grab the, uh, that's the 220 ohm resistor. 10 kilo ohm got down here somehow. So. There we go, we'll put uh, that one to the uh, base of the bottom transistor there, the middle pin, and then to the uh, switch. So hopefully you could see that all right. I was looking at the board the whole time really that I wired that. So now we have our basic circuitry right there. The uh, load makes it more interesting. So we're gonna grab an LED. And uh, so all I put was output on the schematic and the uh, LED, we're going to light it so short lead the cathode goes to that gray jumper, long lead the anode up one row. We've lit tons of LEDs in this video series and you probably lit a bunch of them before you even uh, watch any of my videos. So in any case, we'll come closer 
and uh, it's really common circuit. So we're going to the bottom pin, the emitter of that transistor, and then to the LED. Now, I already have five volts at uh, the supply, and uh, I can see five volts. We'll uh, move the light a little bit right there, and press one switch, the LED stays off. So now when I press this switch, you can see the LED has a faint glow, so I don't like that. But for the most part, it's off. We press both of them though, now the LED is on. So there's four conditions because it's a two input AND gate. There's also three input or four input, so on, AND gates, but that two input's positive. And uh, so right now, since there's two, we have both of them off, the output's off. One of them on, the output's off. Other one on, the output's off, so that was three. And then now we have our fourth condition, both outputs high. So we have that faint glow, I don't like that. So what we'll do is if we take away the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor to the emitter right there, and now we can look at how this looks without that. You can see it's even brighter, it looks like. There you go. We're gonna take a one kilo ohm resistor. And at one time, that's what I was gonna do, but for some reason, I thought 10 kilo ohm would be better. So this was an adjustment you can take, but again, it's at the emitter, it's at the bottom pin of uh, that transistor even though it's a little hard to see. Now, let's see if we got that faint glow. Nope, no faint glow. I'm even gonna turn the light off. So one kilo ohm was better. I'm gonna change the uh, schematic for the uh, website to uh, update that. But there you can see, we do have to press both switches for the output to be on, definitely now. So when you're just pressing this one, it's a lot closer to zero volts than it was before. It's probably about 1.5 or so before. Now it's closer to zero because it's a voltage divider. Remember that. We have the, uh, turn the uh, power on. We have this resistance here. When you close the switch, that resistance up there and then that one down there. So that's going to hold it closer to 2.5 volts. Those are equal value, but we got the uh, diode drop there. And so that's something to be aware of. And I wish I would have realized that sooner. So now we're going to grab the, uh, multimeter and look at that voltage because we have those base two emitter diode drops to uh, deal with. So first we'll look at the uh, supply voltage. That's five volts right there. And now we're gonna come to the resistor and the LED. That is our output. We press one, there's nothing. We press that one there, you can see it looks like about 0.34. So it's close to zero, but still not zero. That's one thing is the output, uh, it's, digital logic we don't quite look at the voltage we look at it if it's about zero volts or about in this case five volts depending on the voltage you're using so there you can see we are shy of five volts by a little more than 1.2 volts there between about uh, 1.2 and 1 point 1.2 and 1.4 it looks like there and that's because again these are basically emitter followers and so the voltage that gets through there gets dropped about 0.6 volts, so you lose that from the supply. And then again, this one drops at about 0.6 volts there, uh, you know, up to about 0.7. And uh, ultimately, that voltage gets lost there. So you add them together, it's about uh, 1.2 to 1.4 volts approximately. So, in any case, this went on a lot longer than expected, so hopefully you still enjoyed it. It's a pretty simple circuit, so I'll explain it in more detail than uh, I would uh, other ones in my quick video series. So make sure you click like, subscribe, the bell, check out one of the other videos that I'm posting, and I will see you in the next video.